got into the fall spirit for this video by making this amazing pumpkin spice latte. For it, you will need almond milk, vanilla extract, pumpkin puree, sugar, pumpkin pie spice, and coffee. In a small saucepan, add two cups of almond milk, two tablespoons of pumpkin puree, I added two tablespoons of sugar, but it's up to you how sweet you want it. You're gonna whisk that together. You want it to be hot, but you do not want to bring this to a boil, so keep your eye on it. Remove that saucepan away from the heat. Now add one tablespoon of vanilla extract, a half a cup of coffee, and one teaspoon of pumpkin spice. Stir that up real good and then pour it into your favorite coffee mug and add a little bit of whipped cream and pumpkin spice and voila! I sprinkled a little pumpkin spice on top of the whipped cream and it was perfection. Now that we got some caffeine in our system, let's get this video started. Everything for all these DIYs is going to be linked below, but for these flannel coasters, you're going to need scissors, a Sharpie, E6000 glue, needles, measuring tape, hot glue, thread, flannel, and felt. Lay your felt down and measure out two squares that measure three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Grab a ruler or anything that has a straight edge and connect the dots. Cut those out and set those aside. Grab your flannel cloth and measure out two squares that are four inches by four inches. You don't have to go and buy cloths if you don't want to. You're more than welcome to recycle a flannel. I just didn't have any flannels that I could recycle for this DIY. I didn't draw on the flannel like I did with the felt. I just didn't want it to run through and accidentally ruin my DIY. So I just used the flannel pattern as a guideline. Loosen it. Place your felt on top of your flannel. Trace the felt square with your E6000 glue and then flip it over and pat it right onto the flannel and let those dry. Once those are completely dry, go ahead and put them together with the felt facing out on both sides. Take four needles and you're going to pin the corners together. That way this doesn't move around when you start to sew it. Once you've done that, go ahead and thread your needle and begin to sew around the edges of the coaster. This took me a little while because I'm not the best sewer in the world, so I just kicked back in a chair with some Netflix while I did it. Sew around all four edges, but leave a little bit of a space because now we're gonna flip it inside out because this is the padding on the inside. Once you've tied everything off and it is secure, go ahead and remove all four needles and then we're gonna start to flip it inside out, which takes a little bit of time. We left that little opening because we are going to start to push the material through that hole and eventually flip it inside out. Like that just said, please have some patience while doing this because if you get aggressive, you might pull your stitching out and ruin everything you just sewed. Once you do push it all the way through though, you can be a little bit aggressive because you need to push the corners out. Just know your own strength, I guess. <laughs> now we're going to grab your hot glue and we're going to close that little opening right there. you got some fall flannel festive coasters. You can make as many as you want, but I made four and I'm actually going to give them as a little gift. Grab whatever rope or ribbon that you want and wrap around the coasters, tie a little bow, and voila! For this fall DIY garland, you are going to need your choice of spray paint color, some fake leaves, rope or ribbon, hot glue, and scissors. You're going to want to tape these leaves down by the stems because if you don't, they'll blow away when you spray paint them. So since your girl is OCD, I wanted the leaves to be flatter, so I put a rag on top of it and then I ironed them a little bit to make them a little bit flatter. It didn't really work, but it worked a little. Grab your spray paint and spray paint both sides thoroughly. On your table or the floor, go ahead and spread those leaves out how you want them to be hung up. Hot glue the tip of the stem and then place your rope right on top of it and let it cool. You want to glue it a little bit further down the stem and I'm going to show you why. Gluing it a little bit further down on the stem allows there to be a little bit of excess that you can cut off and it looks extremely clean. Do that to all your leaves and there you have it, a fall garland. 
This isn't necessary, but if you have twinkle lights, go ahead and thread them through the garland and it looks super cute. For this dry recipe, you are going to want to use a smaller mason jar, not a big one. I started by pouring in a half a cup of old fashioned oats. Take a muddler or a spoon and even out the layers as you go along. If you do not have oat flour already, just put some old fashioned oats in the blender, blend them up till they're super fine, and then you're going to put 3 fourths cups in the jar. Add in 3 quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda to the mixture, and then 1 teaspoon of cinnamon to it, and a good trick for this one is to go around the outside like towards the glass, that way it gives a like faux layer look. I'm just adding some of that oat flour that you saw earlier to this layer. Remember to keep evening them out if you need to. Now add a quarter cup of quick oats. These are different than the old fashioned, I linked them below. Add a pinch of salt and then a half a cup of dark chocolate chips and you are all set to give this as a gift. But don't just hand them a typical mason jar like this, I'm going to show you how to spruce it up a bit. To spruce up this mason jar that you're going to be giving as a gift with a dry recipe in it, you're going to need some flannel or cloth, the top of the mason jar, and some spray paint and glue. Go ahead and spray paint the ring of the mason jar. I love this copper spray paint so I linked it down below for you in case you wanted to use it. Grab your E6000 or you can use hot glue, either one works. Put some glue on the top of the mason jar lid that is going to be showing and grab a little piece of cloth and you're just going to glue it directly onto the top of it. Let it dry and then trim the excess edges. Grab the ring part of your lid and outline the edges on the inside of it with some glue. I used E6000 at first, but then I switched it to hot glue because I didn't like how it turned out. So use hot glue. Place your circle cloth down and let it dry. I think we can agree this looks better than this. Print out the rest of the directions for the recipe and tie it directly to the jar so the person has it when you give it to them as a gift. Add a half a cup of solid coconut oil to an electric mixer and use your whisk attachment to whisk it for 10 minutes. Once it's mixed up, go ahead and add a cup and a half of regular sugar, two teaspoons of pumpkin spice. Once I mixed all of that together, I could still only smell the coconut oil, so I added another teaspoon of pumpkin spice and a little bit of vanilla, and that did the trick to make it more pumpkin spicy. I always save glass jars just because it comes in handy in situations like this. This one was a beautiful one from a previous body scrub that I had, so I just recycled it. With this recipe, I was able to fill up about three of these jars, which is super awesome because you can write a quick little note or you can tie some rope around it and detail it how you want to and it becomes a quick and easy present. I use this after a long day in my studio DIYing all day. It like brings my hands back to life and has an awesome sheen because of the moisture of the coconut oil. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, subscribe and like this video if you wanna see more. I'll catch you next Wednesday.